Hi, Mr. Me. I sing at Blue when I uh, did a review on Spider-Man 5 from I was stretching. <sighs> but honestly, I don't think it's a good movie. I don't think I should have ever given a thumbs up. So, um, I'm going to give myself a redo because I just can't leave this life knowing that I recommended it that I film. So, before, let me put on my glasses. Which helps me think. So, the movie opens up with Spider-Man uh, back in high school after homage to all of the Avengers playing. And he's going on a road trip. And yeah, um, he wants to impress this girl MJ, and um, he's so nervous um, because he has feelings for her. So that's his goal. That's what his desire he wants. So he runs into these four, fifth, five ele this, these elements. Which is a trick created by Mysterio. So he teams up with Mysterio and Nick Fury and Shield again. And um, lots of cool action scenes, action scenes. See, this movie makes way for makes room for action scenes, but not enough for story or character development. You see, at first it tricks you, the first time, but then after you wonder after a while, you start to feel empty. You start to feel like there's no meaning in life anymore. At least that's how I felt. Until you realize this film's a piece of shit. Is a is it a piece of shit? Yes, I actually hate it a lot. Actually, <laughs> but it's a piece of shit. I understand. I like Spider Man too. So, hopefully, the third one we got. So, after this Peter, um, Peter fights the elements with Mysterio. Mysterio seems to be die, but he's not really die. Trying to leave the bad guy. And, um, you know, up here he feels like he tr he's tricked because he gave the these super high-tech stack glasses to Mysterio because he trusted him. Because he reminded him of Stark, who Stark reminded um, Peter of his Uncle Ben in the, uh, in the first movie. Um, a little more on that, um, but Peter, but he, in the first movie he realized that Uncle Ben's gone and... He's not coming back, so he and he re realizing the first one, and that is part of him realizing it's all part of his character of him realizing that the hero that he needs to look up to is himself. That he needs to look up to the most is um, is himself. So he learns to be his. He remembers that he, that he is. So he realizes he is his own hero. He is Spider Man. So, uh, Quinn Bat does all these little crazy illusions, um, to Spider-Man to make it look like that, that, uh, Nick Fury was there and she was there, and he gets hit by a train, Happy comes to his rescue, who's dating Aunt May, lots of things going on in here that are not really fleshed out, except for the scene, the scene with Mysterio and, um, was distinguished Mysterio and Peter, which which was cool long action scene. A lot of people say that went long on too long. Honestly, I think it was fine. Uh, but uh, I see the problem is like it's the film. It's not about showing characters interact or 
in this world or in telling a story in that world. It's about just showing cool action scenes, cool shit. And, but you know, as time goes on, that scene fades and it becomes dated. So, um, yeah, uh, it's funny enough, just to be some mistake by accidentally kills him. Mysterio has one more trick, obviously, at the post credit scene after he's on his J MJJ date, on his, as he's finished his date with MJ, he's swinging for the city in Manhattan. Um, finds, it turns out she made it, she, he recorded some footage to make Peter Parker look like a bad guy and gave Peter Parker a secret identity away. So, really, Cliffhanger. Peter only it, Peter doesn't really spend that much time with MJ as much as I would like to see him spend time. Nor does he joke like he's a should do in the comics. Like in the comics, he doesn't joke. And I know a lot of people are still, I'm the two people that I know that you have come with this theory of um. Hi. Okay. Can you hug me before you go? What do you think of my reveal? Awesome. Two people I know like said that the uh, reason why he doesn't, probably doesn't talk because he was nervous about MJ and impressing her. Honestly, I think that it's because uh, the reason why he doesn't really talk that much as Spider-Man and joke that much as he normally does. He doesn't seem like he's joking himself and he... Um, because he's grieving all his stack is lost and plus he's nervous about MJ but if so why does he only pull two jokes in the from out of nowhere what do you think of this awesome wouldn't make sense to not pull anything and it's and, it, and what's the lack of for some reason he doesn't have a, he's not access to his spice sense or he doesn't believe in his spice sense or doesn't know how to listen to it until the third act, which is very rushed and glanced over. <sighs> hey, Ann. Do you think this film sucks? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'm going home. Okay, I think it sucks. So I'm giving this a thumbs down. And um, I mean, and comes in some of that other adaptation. He just he he still jokes, even though he's in love. In fact, he's in. Funnier sometimes when he's in love. I remember that. Uh, I mean, they could make uh, ice. I don't know why they had to get a uh, replace Peter Parker from Peter Parker, who was in Homecoming, to Peter Parker and Far From Home, who has little to no personality or identity. And, uh, what I liked about this Peter Parker, um, the stakes always felt personal to him. Every situation in here felt personal. Here it feels more, not personal, but pr public. All the things that he's in. The stakes he's in, the fight scenes he's in, they all feel public, but not personal. Then one thing that feels personal is the really illusion scene. Cool illusion scene. That Mysterio made to trick Peter Parker that he killed Fury and trick that he was still that he was in Shield and to trick Peter Parker in this long, complex, very somehow very coordinated plan to trick Peter Parker, which is illusion that uh, Peter fighting Mysterio and this illusion seemed feel fairly lonely. Him, him and his uh, high school 
and in his like very classic Spider-Man costume. This was uh just kind of to show to me uh the struggle between Kip Parker has with being Spider-Man and also how it's affecting his high school life. In his life in general. But it would have been nice if we got more stuff like that. And everyone wants him to be the, the next Iron Man. Uh, but he doesn't know how he... I don't want him to be the next I want just want him to be himself. Uh, and, um... And uh, he doesn't know if he wants to be the next Simon because he doesn't know if he's going to live up to that. And I love the, the my first thing, one good scene in this film, a really beautiful scene in this film, is when Happy says, you're not going to live up to, you're not going to be the next Simon. You can't live up to Tony Stark. Tony couldn't live up to Tony Stark. So Happy is tells him to just be himself. So he, I guess the reason why he can't uh, have access to his spice sense because of so much stress that he has and grief he has over the loss of Tony Stark, which is his friend. But it doesn't really show that at all. It very quickly glances over and uh, brushes over it. You know, I said at one time, um, that, uh, into Spider-Man, one of these famous Spider-Man film. But honestly, if um, I think uh, this is my least favorite Spider-Man film, and I I have serious anger towards this film, and I just hate it because I hate where it did. I I hate the whole thing. So yeah. I have had trouble sleeping because of this. I found what this is. This is Spider-Man 1 all over again. This film is awful. I, I, I know I might be exaggerating, but I honestly think this is worse than Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go. Teen Titans Go versus the Teen Titans. Which was, at the, remember how I said that was the worst comic book movie ever made? Uh, and uh, that was the worst movie I've seen. Worst than last year, Ben, then. Um, on me. Oh, it's still pretty bad, uh, that, like, like that. But honestly, I think this is worse, sir. I honestly think this is the one I can definitely say that Emma, Sh I mean, Emma Shalom from has more personality than this. And has more human emotion than this did. Except for that one great scene when Happy tells him, to just be himself and not be the next, no, don't worry about being the next Tony Stark. This is, uh, aside from, I mean, I will say the film looks beautiful and gorgeous and has great, sh and shot great and has seriously creative action scene at times. But besides all that, uh, the thing is, it's just empty. It's, you know, because, that's, that whole action scenes and stuff, like, all those things are going to age. 
And what will they say about Tony? The little things, Bam, Spider Man sucks. Because, you know, he does suck in this thing. And it's really sad because he got really talented. He got a really talented guy who can play Spider Man. It seems like they will full focus on, like, having rushed out plot halls and focus on the heavily focus on drawn out action scenes but not but create characters that don't really flesh the only take time to flesh out or give Spider-Man a personality. So yeah I'm I said that this could get Spider-Man's sense of humor right by 50%, but honestly, it feels more like he got his personality right by 19%. And that's how many Rotten Tomatoes I would give it if I was a crit. 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. And if you don't know what Rotten Tomatoes are, it's basically, you know, the high tomatoes are, the higher the numbers on Ron Tomatoes, the better the film is, but the lower the number, the less you enjoy it. And that's how much I enjoy it. I feel a lot better saying that.